I can't remember what it was, but anyway, it wasn't bad. So let us now resume. Is Hernan around? All right, there you are, Hernan. So, coffee break. Many should be back now. The next presentation is called LAC 2022, 10 version 2. Authorized recipients of delegated blocks to sign ROAs. So, I'm trying to read the teleprompt, but maybe I did a trick with the other script. So, we'd like to invite Hernan Mogilevsky to present this proposal. The author has 20 minutes to explain his proposal. 19 minutes. Eighteen, seventeen. Hi, can you hear me? Good morning. I'm Hernan Mogilevsky. I'm going to present the proposal authorized recipients of delegated blocks to sign ROAs. First of all, a brief introduction to what an AROA is. Route Origin Authorization. AROA is a digital certificate which has been signed with cryptographic security and it tells everyone that I am authorized to announce these resources through my devices. So what we see here is a chain of trust, and everyone trusts what LACNIC says. LACNIC has a trust anchor that signs and certifies the digital certificates that we can generate. So basically, what is a problem? Operators who have delegated IP blocks cannot sign the ROAs of the delegated segments. They have to request those who delegated those prefixes, those IP blocks, which is to the holders thereof, to sign the ROAs. Operationally, this brings complications because very often we depend on the good will of the holder in order to proceed to the signature or of the timing, which, not be, which might not be our own timing. So the proposal is that when you receive a delegated block and when you register that delegation in the who is, then the recipient might have the opportunity to sign these certificates stating that I can announce an IP block with an autonomous system. So you have the capacity to generate that certificate and to revoke if required. Now this is a second version of the policy. The first one received good comments from the impact analysis that were taken into account for the purpose of this second version. So what we did was to remove the exclusive capacity of the recipient because a holder of the resources should be able to maintain that capacity provided 
by Lacknick's resource assignment of amending the ROAS for that because they are the holders. You will see that the word client has been highlighted. This was an involuntary error in my wording. If the proposal were to reach consensus, the suggestion is to do an editing of to remove that word because it was a mistake when I uploaded it to the policy. So it's not a word that should be there. Therefore, the proposal would not include that word. Another part of the proposal that was removed from version one to version two is that we had added a solution, an administrative solution, which was of an operational nature as to how to manage certificates and this was also objected by the impact analysis, so this was also taken into account. So there's not much more that I have to add. So thank you, Hernan. We'll now proceed to the impact analysis. We invite Mariela Roger from LACNIC's staff. Mariela, you have 10 minutes. So let us wait until this comes up on the screen. The impact analysis. So I apologize, but I see this in the big screen, but I don't see it over here. Right. All right, thank you. So staff comments on this proposal submitted by Hernan. The comment we have is that LACNIX understands that when a member that received the resources from LACNIC eliminates that sub-assignment, then the associated rowers will be revoked. That is our comment. Among the recommendations, this has to do with what Hernan mentioned. So for the reasons of consistency with the terminology in the manual, either to remove the term client and use recipient or substitute with the phrase the receiving client, so replacing that with the organization holding the sub-assigned resources. As to the impact, in the case of approving this, there are several systems that might be affected. For example, RPKI, MILACNIC, and some others. The term for implementing this will be communicated to the list in case this proposal is approved. Regarding the NIRs, Nick PR and Nick Mexico, we have an impact done by them too. One of the things that we have to highlight is that Nick Brazil was telling us that because they use a delegated model, any entity that receives assignments and wishes to use RPKI must establish and configure its own certificate authority. That on one hand, and on the other hand, if the provider that will create mechanisms for that sub-assignment that should be in the offspring. Uh, so, well, she corrects herself. She, cr she corrects herself. The, propo the provider will also have to create mechanisms in order to have uh, sort of offspring certificates. 
So if these are canceled, the issued certificates have to be done in a synchronized way. This is what Nix Mexico was telling us. She corrects herself. It was Nick Brazil that this should be taken into account in terms of the impact. In the case of Nick Mexico, this NIR shares the impact analysis with us because they use the same model for ROA generation. That would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariela. So let's start the discussion time. I, I want to say that I stole the image of the chain of trust. I, it's Carlos Martinez, so I'm sorry I should have said that. Excellent. Anything else about uh, the presentation? The, the bingo people say that you have to add the word verna and verdu. Uh, he's joking. It's a joke. They're making jokes about uh, prices. So now let's start the discussion time. We invite you to share your doubts, uh, uh, feedback in the Q&A uh, panel, or by raising your hand in uh, Zoom uh, and uh, the microphones that we have here. Each question has two minutes, and the author will uh, respond in up to two minutes. So let's start here. Pedro, you have the mic. Yes, I'm Pedro of the U of the Federal University in uh, Paraná, and my doubt has to do with uh, that topic that uh, has been mentioned, and. I'm asking whether we don't have to clarify in the text that whenever you delete something of the who is, you should also uh, delete the uh, ROA. Yes, the policy says while the registry is in the who is. So that includes that when, so when, as soon as it's deleted from a who is, then it's no longer there. So it says, while the registry is kept uh, in who is. No, we don't have any in the Q&A or in no raised hands. So what's your name? Where do you come from? I'm Carlos from LACNIC. And I, I wanted to answer Pedro's uh, comment. We uh, we wouldn't like the policy to be so specific, uh, saying revoke, because that has implications in of software, writing of software. I think uh, that it's not good to include that in the policy. I think that, well, the, uh, you can just translate that into implementation. Franco, do you have any Q&As? Uh, let's just tell me, none so far. Hello, good morning. I'm Pablo from Argentina. We'll support Hernán's proposal. The operational problems are real for the ISPs. The only thing that I challenge is the length of the prefix. It should be a slash 24 for IPv4 and slash 28 for IPv6, because most of our upstream providers put that limit to provide us the prefix. So I wouldn't be able to do that with a, a transit client with uh, longer prefixes, not longer than that. But in German terms, we agree with the policy and we, we support it. Thank you, Hernan. Well, these are operational practices and we try not to include it in the manual. So this would be enough. We would manage to 
uh, get uh, fulfill our purposes and then we, we try to leave the rest out. Franco, any questions? Yes, there's a participant that wants to ask. Fernando? Siriane? Hello, Fernando. Hello. Hello, guys. How are you? I have a question. Uh, Hernan, I have a question. I'd like to ask, Hernan, how do you see this proposal? Because I don't think it's your intent, but uh, in a way, this could facilitate the use of resources migrating from one holder to the other <clears throat> beyond what the policies uh, permit by leasing or lending assignments. So as was pointed out by the previous participant in practice, this can only be of help for blocks over slash 24. <coughs> Usually when ISP designs a block to provide connectivity with the slash 27, 28, 29, the objective of the proposal does not have a practical effect there. The only option would be if the holder, when you assign uh, blocks over slash uh, 24. So this is whether the announcement of that block of the SAN, whichever it is, is being done for the purpose of using resources and not as a lease, as is done by CDNs. So the CDN resources are announced by other ASNs, and even so, the resources continue being used by the companies who are the holders of the resources. So I'd like to ask Hernan, how do you view this in the sense that this could facilitate this type of practices or not? Thank you. Okay. I don't know. The policy or the policy, what the policy proposal attempts to do is to simplify an operational aspect that is real. Now, what is not in the policy, I, I, I can't decide whether it will favor it, whether it will favor other things or not. This does not tell us of the, uh, the reasons why somebody received uh, an IPv4 block or, or why. What they say is, this is uh, I received a block that has been delegated. It's in the policy. How that delegation can take place, and I'm going to be able to sign the ROA. So that is the scope of the policy. Thank you, Hernan. Well, let's go. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Nicolas of Columbia Net, and my question is similar to that of the previous colleague. As to the size of the prefix that for which the ROA ROA could be validated, would that be included in uh, by LACNIC if they approve it? What would it be like? Because if uh, I I'm delegated to slash uh, 26. Uh, it's a subdelegation, but I can't apply a ROA there because it's smaller than a slash 24. Well, the ROA, you can slash, you can sign the ROA with a slash 26, but you can't announce it. Yes. So that, I, indeed. So the LACNIC wouldn't be tell you, would tell you, no, you can't. Uh, validate uh, that row because it's a slash 26. So how do you fix that? Uh, um, well, if you have slash 24 or a larger block, you should have that uh, block signed in order to be able to, to announce it. Carlos wants to explain things. Yes, he'll explain it more clearly, I'm sure. Well, sorry, Wesley. I'd like to mention that what Hernan's policy does is to add a feature to 
a mechanism that has always existed. Subdelegation of uh, prefixes an organization has the possibility of delegating a block uh, a prefix with a mask um, to some other organization. <clears throat> so, And the original spirit, I'm speaking of what happened 20 years ago, so that, the, that who is uh, would uh, know who is uh, announcing it. What Hernan does is to add a functionality, a feature. What Nicolas says is something that is naturally controlled because the only resources that the uh, one who receives the validation uh, can see is the prefix that uh, is uh, delegated by the ancestor. Uh, we, we, we won't, um, you, you won't be able to put less than you were delegated. That's the way it works. Thank you, Carlos. Before going to Wesley, he's so patient. Is there anything in the Q&A? No, we don't have anything, but somebody has raised his their hand. Sorry, is there a hand up? Yes, somebody's raising. It's Jordi Pelé. Well, you have two minutes, Jordi. Yes, indeed. When version one was uh, published, I said that I didn't understand why today we are presenting a proposal only to include IPv4. As a matter of fact, somebody in Argentina said that in the case of IPv6, they expect it to be a slash uh, 48. Today, it's obvious that we have to send proposals when it's up, when it covers several resources, when it covers the two IPv4 and IPv6, because with this proposal, you can't do the same with IPv6. So I don't know whether the author was not paying attention or I didn't ins insist enough, but I, I'm sure I presented this in somewhere. So, uh, and I think it's important and it hasn't been taken into account. I think that we should solve that. Thank you, Hernan. Well, I think that that is in the uh, uh, registry of the resources and I'm not sure that it's separated for both. Um, and uh, so uh, I think that the proposal is uh, modifies an existing text. Uh, well, if we look at this, let's let's avoid personal dialogues. Yes, because we have people in the microphone here. Hello, everyone. Wesley Correa of Telecom Training. I'd like to support the proposal. I think it's very interesting indeed. The objective of the proposals is to solve problems, and the proposal presented by the author really does solve an actual problem, especially for smaller ISPs that by transit to a larger ISP and they need an assignment where only one person has a technical user to change the assignment and signing the ROA. So really, I think it's a good policy. It's just a change that instead of client, you put uh, the receiving uh, um, uh, part. So congratulations for your proposal. <clears throat> Thank you, Wesley. Well, here. Franco Q&A, nothing so far. We could help by saying here Mila Knick or CWFQ. I am going to the teleprompter. We, there are two people raising their hands. F first, Fernando Frigliani. Fernando? Can you hear me? This will be a question based on the comment made by Carlos that co 
uh, made me doubt if a client of an ISP that is not an ASN receives a slash 26 uh, and signs a ROA for that slash 26, but with the ASN of the internet provider because he won't be able to announce that blog having uh, um, in our RPKI query for that block in a slash 26 and a larger block of the provider would be that be a valid query would that protect that subdelegated block subassigned block well I don't know whether my question is clear if I understood it um, if somebody receives a subdelegation of a slash 26, uh, um, yes, uh, they will have problems uh, announcing the validation, but that uh, is a problem of the ASPs that for good reasons they don't accept anything smaller than a slash 24. That doesn't mean that people are not announcing smaller things in a certain environments, for instance, on IXP, and there they can generate a row for a slash 26. In some cases, it may make sense. So and uh, so the question about the RPK the the RPKI query will be valid. Yes, the restriction of the slash twenty four to is is not uh, because of the protocol, but it's an operational practice of the ISP. That's where it comes from. Thank you, Hernan. Yes, I agree. Yes, one could say. As we, as you can say, I'll announce a slash 24 and, and uh, 24 or a slash 19 and the slash uh, 20. You could say from slash 24 to slash 26, and that would be perfectly valid, and it would be uh, valid for all uh, the environments where you need to announce the prefix. Second online comment, Franco. Yes, Jordi. Just for sake of clarifying what I mentioned earlier. Precisely this problem is what is expected to be solved with the s proposal I made earlier on. Section 2 is for IPv4. Section 4 of the manual is exclusively for IPv6. I understand that the purpose of this proposal is to, for the two, applies to the two. It, would, it would be pointless to cover IPv4 and not IPv6. This proposal should distinguish in a paragraph describing, describing the prefix length in IPv4 and in IPv6, and then in a common section, which is the one we spoke earlier of on the mandates. I, there is another thing that we have to understand. It is not desirable that providers sub-assign IPv6 prefixes. It is the these organizations that should receive these prefixes directly by direct subassignments of the RIRs. In this case, this it is LACNIC. We do this in IPv4 because, in addition to the scarcity of addresses, these subassignments or allocations are necessary. But it would be necessary if this proposal is approved, which will have implications on several registry systems to do this right, correctly, right from the outset, instead of doing it twice. Well, I didn't fully understand if what you were saying is right or wrong, if it's OK to sign the rowers, but it's wrong to delegate them. So don't delegate, but yes, I'll authorize them to sign the rowers in IPv6. I wouldn't stop the development of this policy because a part is missing for IPv6. What I would do is to continue with this policy, and I would add another policy, if required, to, the other, to another part of the manual, or wait until the policy on integration is implemented to see what it looks like afterwards. But for the time being, I think the majority would be all right if it is in section 2 of IPv4. This section 2 on IPv4 is implemented. Thank you, Hernan. 
Nobody else is at the microphones here. Micro Franco. No requests online. So before we proceed to measure the temperature, those who think are going to raise your hand against this proposal, I'd like to invite you now to explain your position. We insist on the fact that it is very important that those who are against a proposal should please explain why this makes the task of the chairs easier and also of the person who makes the proposal. So with the assistance of LACNIC's staff, we're going to proceed to measure the temperature in the room. I'd like to thank all those of you who have expressed your opinions and those who have expressed your opinions online. Let me remind you once again that in the Zoom tool, you might be viewing voting. We do not vote. We just tap the temperature in the room. The outcome of this survey does not imply that the proposal reaches uh, is uh, approved. This is done through the mailing list. There are videos on each of the presentations which are viewed afterwards. So we'll now proceed to tapping the temperature in the room and please express your opinions in the Zoom option for voting. Please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you are against this proposal, please. Y finalmente, por favor, le so abstentions, those who are who abstain, please raise your hand. Thank you. So, proposal LAC 2020 10 version 2 completed eight weeks of discussion on January 19, 2022. So, as from today and into within two weeks' time, the moderators will communicate to the community if this proposal 2020-10 authorized recipients of delegated blocks to sign ROAS. The discussion will continue in the policy list. We showed this at the beginning. Those who need to know which is the list, please write to Ariel or to me. Thank you, Hernan, for your proposal. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> 